what exactly in general awareness would you want uh, to know so that i can accordingly share my inputs for you and for the rest of course so am i audible you are audible go ahead yes adaf i think you you have to unmute yourself Okay, I think we Sadaf got uh, logged out. We'll 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 wait for her. But in the meanwhile, uh, uh, maybe I can take up another query, which was asked by Akansha. Uh, is Akansha in the meeting? I don't think so. Okay, Sadaf is coming back. Yeah, Akansha is also there in the meeting. Akansha will take your query also. We'll just wait for uh, Sadaf. Yes, Sadaf. Uh, am I audible? You are audible. Go ahead. Um, I'm so sorry. My network is a bit unstable today. No problem. Uh, sir, in the general awareness section, uh, first, uh, my level of preparation has been. I've been trying to mainly focus on um, the part where the current affairs are um, based on. So uh, it is more of uh, from like 2020 to 2021 right and there are certain sections where uh, it's talking about international events and then national hmm. events right then again it's about terrorism and military so it just cannot confine itself to this current affairs so will that include as a general awareness the previous and the past history as well okay thanks for the question sadaf like firstly i would like to tell this to everyone that Uh, in social science irrespective the most critical part of your uh, credibility is certainly your general knowledge and general awareness and when it comes to social science if you study well uh, in terms of understanding the tenets of social science you will always find that uh, history plays a very important role along with indian polity and constitution which you cannot compromise at all in your social science discourse right current affairs also let me also clarify this when questions come from current affairs um there is a great deal of focus again on situations and events which are more concerned with human rights oriented issues social movements right uh fundamental right issues maybe events which are connected with certain rights say with whether it is human rights whether it is consumer rights uh whether it is public health now when you look at general knowledge for over the years for an entrance test like this net i don't know like how long uh, have you all been able to get information because uh, uh this unlike many other exams they don't uh, you know publicize their past papers because they believe that uh, uh, a student's approach towards the preparation has to be very holistic but when you talk of being holistic it does not mean also that anything and everything is important for gk so when you are preparing for gk i would like to help all of you realize that a very good reference of studying gk is connected with the united nation sustainable development goals un sdg has 17 goals i'm sure most of you must be aware of because you must have studied that in gk also starting from goal number 1 that is like no poverty with each goal if you look at how that goal is being realized in a country like india so if i talk of no poverty then no poverty is connected greatly to maybe skill development livelihood so the schemes policies missions of the government that are connected to poverty alleviation is quite naturally going to be important affairs whether it is current whether it is historical in the context of a tisnet gk right even say if you look at uh, the goals 
across and the schemes and policies. The articles or schedules under the constitution that, ha that has created the provision, like whether it is Article 21A that leads to, as we know, the Right to Education Act, right? There are certain schedules in the constitution that are focused on scheduled tribes, minorities, because TIS is an institute that specifically tries to look into those sectors that are usually sidelined, neglected, or they are pushed below the carpet. So Sadaf, when you are approaching current affairs, try to optimize your learnings connected to of current affairs, which are more connected to the realization of these sustainable goals. Even if you see goal number five, that can be connected to gender equality. Gender, as we understand, of course, one major issue is the male-female disparity. And quite naturally, based on that, a Tata Institute of Social Sciences is more likely to ask you questions on a female sports person and her achievement than a male counterpart, right? Similarly, they might even ask you questions connected with the transgenders. They might even ask you a question which are based out of sexual orientation, whether it is lesbian, uh, bisexual, gay, transgenders, right? Queer, right? So anything and everything which are connected, at least in the Indian context at the first go, in the recent past, as well as historically, or maybe an act or a bill that has been passed. These are going to be some of the major things uh, which I can tell you TIS prioritizes over and above many other things. So at this moment, a big concern in everyone's mind is that, oh God, GK is so vast and what should I leave? What should I study? The point is that in social science, when you start studying masters at an institute like this, every student in their first semester, they start off with what they call a foundation course that comprises your entire understanding of Indian history of development, your entire understanding of rule of law and rights of constitution, your understanding of caste, gender discrimination, your understanding of community, right? Your understanding about environment, your understanding about media ecology. So things which are connected to these sectors, this recognizes them to be like the foundational knowledge, which is important for you to foray into social science. So you can be rest assured that the faculties would rather want to test candidates on these questions more broadly. I'm not saying that all 40 questions in a GK will only come from these parts. But what I'm trying to help everyone understand is it is not about, uh, it, it, it is not about that you will be able to say get all 40 questions say correct in GK, but what you can expect is a majority part of the questions will be drawn from these contexts, Sadaf. So I hope like it is kind of clear, Sadaf, like what you wanted to know. Uh, yes, you were, sir. You were mentioning, you. yeah, you were mentioning to me about international news. International yes, news, again, I'm telling you, this is not bothered about international news till it has a big impact in our society. So of course, like okay, things, things like racism, where we fought with Black Lives Matter, right? From the US. And like even representation of women, like which includes Kamala Harris. And in similar lines, you have to find out how can you draw parallels in the Indian context? So if Kamala Harris became the first woman to be representing the US government at an important authoritarian position, what could have been the parallels that we have seen in India across the different verticals of governance uh, or say a law or even say administration, whether it is government, whether it is private, representation of gender, 
that itself is one of the um, very attractive prospects that these faculties usually look at. So that is one thing I would suggest that all of you should keep in mind. Right, uh, next, uh, after Sadaf, I think Akansha, um, you had asked a question. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks for joining in. I'll, I'll quickly uh, try and see if I can find your, uh, yes. So, uh, Akansha, I think, uh, will you be able to share your question, please? Hello, sir, yes. Yes. My question was, uh, in descriptive writing, how much uh, should we, how much essay is required? Till how many pages you should write? Uh, descriptive writing in the TIS net, you mean? TISMAT. TISNET? NET? TISMAT, sir. When is your TISMAT? Sir, uh, right. I'm not preparing right for right now. I'm preparing for TISNET 2022. But okay. I was just very curious because I'm very weak in essays. Okay. So I thought I could work on that. Yes. So essay, Akansha, firstly, uh, I would like to sh tell you that if you prepare well, automatically you get a foundation to write and express better. Okay. When you have not so very clarity about grammar, uh, sorry, uh, in terms of like, you know, your, your approach towards uh, the knowledge pertaining to it, you will find it a little challenging. But Akansha, I can tell you that uh, don't... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, so uh, what I would suggest Akansha is uh, don't be so uh, concerned about descriptive writing at this onset because next year the pattern can change, a lot of things can happen differently, right? Focus on the major tenets of social science. Writing, I would say that TIS in, as an institute, they are not looking at any, any specific way of writing. There are enough people who might be even quite challenged with their understanding and expression of English language. But if they're able to communicate what they are trying to effectively, that is what an institute like this looks at, right? So you don't have to be very conscious about specifically what uh, you should be able to do with, uh, say, the descriptive writing part. Okay, sir, thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, moving forward. Right. So I think most of the other questions that I'm noticing on your, uh, on, on your queries is concerning GK, right? I mean, uh, so I would, I would like to know firstly that from all of you, anything more specific that you want to know? Because GK is not a medicine that you, are, you will pop in and you will reproduce in the exam. GK is an outcome of a habit, right? But yes, when it comes to an exam, you should be able to optimize the GK better. Even if I tell you that, you know, Indian polity is important, like that itself is a lot, like, you know, when it comes to Indian constitution, right? But what you re should realize is that, look at, again, the SDGs, Look at uh, the courses that this offers, right? So what courses do this offer? This offers programs on social work, right? Now, if you are a student of human resource management and you are ignorant about social work, then you will miss out questions from GK. What do I mean by social work? Social work is based on human right-based approach, right? right to live, right to express, uh, 
right towards food and shelter, freedom of press, right? Uh, right to information, right to education. So all of these become important aspects when you are looking at, uh, uh, say specifically to your uh, GK to optimize. The second important factor, which again, I find many of students missing out is that they study GK in question answer format, which is something which we see can go in either ways. Because if you're studying in question answer format, you do not know from where the question has been taken. You have no reference to the context of the question, right? And quite naturally what happens is, in case you completely forget the answer, you don't even have a sense of reasoning into GK. This is again one aspect which I've been highlighting to many of our learners that in GK, you can actually use certain levels of reasoning. Like say, for example, if a quotation has been given in the question and they are asking you whose quotation is this, like which leader made this quote? Now, sometimes looking at the quote, you might try to understand, is this quote a very aggressive quote? Is this quote uh, something which is you know, a little more balanced, diplomatic. Why are you trying to assess the tone of the quote? Because based on that, if there are options like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, B.R. Ambedkar, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, Lala Lajpat Rai, lot of times you can reason out, even if you don't know who made that quote, based on the personality of an individual based on the approach of that individual, right? So that is why knowing your basic history becomes utmostly important, right? And always remember that the paper setter is trying to play with your mind, okay? Like say, for example, a lot of people are, have been asking that COVID-19 pandemic are there possibilities that a lot of questions can come from it, right? And people are reading up everything connected to COVID-19 and we, most of us also know about it a lot. We know what is the full form of RT-PCR test. We know what is the full form of, you know, uh, being a, a RNA, this is an RNA virus, right? We know uh, what is the full form of ICMR, right? Of course, we know the full form of WHO, right? We know uh, what is meant by epidemiology. Now, these are things which have directly been pushed into the public knowledge due to the virus, right? But what we may not be completely aware is that, how does the protection of people in terms of public health management come is, is supported by the Indian constitution? What are the articles? What are the provisions, right? What are the overarching policy uh, frameworks? Because that is more generic in nature, that is more fundamental in nature, not specifically to COVID-19. This will have more focus on asking you things which are more fundamental in nature. Like this will ask you, like in you know, something like Article 32, which B.R. Ambedkar called as the heart and soul of the constitution, came as a question a couple of years ago. The reason why Article 32 is important is it also allows the constitution to be amended and rectified as per the requirement of the people. So you, you see that how they look at things which are critical. So when you are studying GK, your smartness of studying GK lies on estimating that you know the, these can be things which can come as source of questions or become source of questions. When you're looking at an SDG and you say studying uh, things like uh, good health and well-being, okay. So good health and well-being, which has been a focal point 
we might ask you questions from history the history of public health in india okay so see what are the achievements or the milestones that india might have achieved over the years since independence in public health the milestones because they define the way we are now so that is going to be a static part then and then you come to the current affairs part things which have been launched around right Techn how technology is being used to intervene into public health lot of students have been asking me what are the important questions from science and technology now as a social science institute you cannot expect that science and technology will become the core qu question format when it comes to this but what you can expect is that um science and technology that is applied to social development they can become important question parts right so that is where exactly i want to highlight right the the understanding the other question uh, which uh, i was uh, expecting some of you will ask but you no one asked me also maybe people are thinking it's a personal question that why am i wearing a mask while talking to you i am at my house there is nothing around but why am i wearing a mask yes mr hello so the reason why i am wearing a mask is very simple and i also got this idea essentially from one of our, our learners in mahesh who's who's part, one of the participants out here that you should be able to get used to wearing a mask and appearing for the exam so the mock test that you're giving the practices that you're doing you have to get habituated wearing a mask don't save your mask only for the exam day it's not the same as not wearing it and wearing it right so these are also certain technicalities which i want you to realize this year right and don't think about the challenges that this year has put through think about the opportunities that you know are, are getting opened we had recently a placement drive like which is taking place at this guwahati end of this month where a recruiter who are one of the beneficiaries of melinda and bill gates foundation and they are coming to the tis campuses all the campuses i believe and they are taking students after a masters from social work programs peace and conflict studies programs to work at grassroots levels to support infrastructural growth in education and the starting salary that they are offering to everyone is 11 lakhs per annum 11 lakhs mind you and it is not an hrm program the reason why they are offering that salary is because melinda and bill gates foundation they have ramped up their investment in india to support education at grassroots level and at basic level because the amount of backlog that has been generated in the last 11 months or so due to the pandemic is good enough to push close to 10 to 20 percent more people back to poverty and no government subsidy no uh, you know pradhan mantri kisan scheme no public distribution system can ever reduce the levels of poverty they can support them you know for the sustenance but that's not what we are trying to achieve if we really want to become a 5 trillion dollar economy quote unquote and that is where students like all of you uh, aspirants like all of you have a very strong demand so when you're looking at 20th february as an exam day be excited about that opportunity that you can be a part of right if you're looking at 20th uh, february like you know by some means you want to cross that 
and then you will be through the PAT and PI, then it's not going to be as smooth sailing always. So your mindset is going to be very critical, right? So the, the, the basic is that questions are going to be very basic, very fundamental in nature, whether it is from maths, whether it is from verbal ability, whether it is from GK. And it is your mindset that's going to really strengthen the outcome. On top of it, the greatest advantage that an exam like TISNET has is there is no negative marking. That is an advantage. That is also a disadvantage. Advantage because quite naturally, you are not penalized for anything that you mark incorrectly. Disadvantage because, you know, it kind of pushes the cutoff upwards. Right. So that is where I feel uh, your prudence of going about questions is going to be very critical. The thumb rule when you are attempting a paper like this net on exam day is that right from the beginning till 30 or 40 minutes into the exam, your target has to be to be able to mark 30 to 40 questions on your screen from all across, whichever you feel you know, you are confident about, and the answer is matching, the option is matching, the logic is working, please go ahead, even in a scattered banner, doesn't matter, but ensure that in the first 30, 40 minutes, 30 to 40 questions are marked. Don't waste time at the beginning. You can waste time towards the end. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that we make, especially in a competitive exam. Some of you who might have appeared for exams like CAT or ZAT or SNAP earlier, I don't know whether you realize this, but this is a very important method. And whoever has followed this over the years, especially with a high scoring uh, exam like this net by high scoring i mean that even for social work cutoffs are above 50. when i compare that you know with an exam like cat if someone is scoring a 30 percent the equivalent percentile is much higher right even someone scores a zero we know that you get a pretty you know decent percentile because the competitiveness is at a very different level, right? So for this net, your start is very fundamental. And to ascertain that the start goes well, what you should do in the next three or four days is, in a diary, you write down which are your most comfort zones, right? So say for example, uh, let me share my screen and I will definitely take more questions from all of you. I hope everyone can view the screen. So what you do is that as a build up to the exam, you write something like that we call your planning. And the first thing that you do is write what we call plan A. And under plan A, you can write say, mm, mathematics and logical reasoning that of course includes di data interpretation under this you write down the topics which you feel and you have noticed that you are really comfortable with sri ponna has been asking that what are the important topics of maths for an exam like this net and for any social science entrance exam, the super important topics of maths are always connected with arithmetic. 
things which enable you to do social research well. So whether it is percentage and its application like profit and loss, simple and compound interest, your calculation of efficiency, labor wages in time and work, time and distance also, ratio proportion and its application to mixture Average, average also includes, let me tell you, uh, mean, median mode, which are basically the basic measures of central tendency as we call it. Set theory, because Venn diagram, set theory, they are integral part of social research. So the, the mathematical foundation for social science is what is tested during an entrance exam of TISNET. Okay. And maybe some basic applications of probability. I am talking about the most important parts and mensuration. You might be wondering that sir has written almost the entire syllabus. And that is true because these are fundamentally the always important parts which you will require in your analytical methods. I have not mentioned trigonometry. Very few questions have come in the past, but I am not saying that though it's not an important chapter. But it is definitely lesser, less important than most of these that I have mentioned on your screen. So in your plan A, when you talk of, you should be able to identify which are your strong points that you would like to uh, start off with when you're attempting questions from maths. In the same manner for, for verbal ability, in the same manner uh, maybe for GK. So this identification is going to be very important. Suppose you have no clue with GK, but still try to at least ascertain from maths and English. Because when you start a question paper in the actual exam day, you start from what you are most comfortable with. When you're preparing or revising, say at this moment, you do the opposite. You look at parts that you're not very good at because you want to improve them. But when you attempt a question paper, there is no scope of experimentation at the start because psychological boost at the beginning of a, of a competitive exam is very important because that excites you and motivates you better. And the time that elapses in a competitive exam also is very valuable because it gives you the straight away lead between students who have, who have been unable to capitalize on that time. So this is a very important aspect which I feel uh, you should be able to ascertain plan A and then plan B. Plan B basically are the things which are not so comfortable for you across say maths, English, uh, GK, uh, logical reasoning maybe. Say logical reasoning, suppose you get very confused with seating arrangement questions. So you should be able to identify that, right? Say in logical reasoning, you get very confused with a question on cubes and dice. You should be able to identify that. Say logical reasoning, you are very good with, suppose, uh, coding, decoding, blood relations, direction sense. Or say in logical reasoning, you are you're, you're quite good with syllogisms, right? So the strength and weakness analysis prior to the exam is going to be very important. Right, so Sriponna, I hope your question has been uh, answered through uh, the visual. Yes, sir, thank you. Yes. 
So Sadaf, uh, you are saying that we don't have menstruation this year. That's not true. Let me clarify this. This will not ask give you menstruation in a written format. I'll, so I'll show you the syllabus maybe for everyone once more. If there is any any difficulty. Basic geometry includes mensuration. Basic geometry does not include in a, in a social science entrance exam, any uh, complicated questions which might be say related to geometry that MB entrance exams give. So if I open the syllabus once more for everyone. Meanwhile, if anyone has any specific questions, please use your mic to ask me or write on chat. So this is where we are looking at, right? And believe me, what they have written up here up to class 10, that is absolutely true. Uh, now in class 10, I believe CBSC and NCRT syllabus, they have probability also included, which many other boards do not cover in class 10th maybe. So there is a lot of times this doubt in students' minds that is probability still there or is permutation combination also there. The fact remains that they are in included because at least probability is taught within class 10 under NCRT rules as an, ex as an extended part of statistics. That is exactly how it is applied in social science. So Sadaf, basic geometry includes mensuration. Mensuration basically means calculation of length, breadth, perimeter, calculation of solid figures, surface area, volume, um, area of four walls, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, calculation of volume of a cone, uh, volume of a cube, rectangular parallel pipette, cuboid. Uh, these are, would be the triangle area, uh, triangle, um, you know, equilateral triangle area, all of these are the essential elements of mensuration. So any other questions, anyone that you would like me to address? Varsha, uh, you're asking what are the kind of questions asked in English? Varsha, are you still there? Yeah, got it, sir. I can see it on the screen now. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? Anything specific? Oh, uh, sir, I have one question. So yes, it's like I've realized throughout the uh, mock tests that I've given. So whenever I am getting question, like the section on mathematics, so I get very um, scared and mm. most of the time I'm doing a lot of silly mistakes. It's right. not that I don't know. Right. It might happen that I don't not know majority of the parts, but so there are, it's like, so how can I improve on that? Mm. So the GK and verbal ability are able, but uh, mathematics right. is terrible. Right. So the point is that Madhurima and this is for many of you who might have been uh, during your schooling period, not in very friendly terms with mathematics, okay? Now the point remains that even if you have prepared say over a year or so, or even lesser for an exam like TISNET and say that is your first competitive exam um, in your life, or maybe the first time that after many years or maybe after class 10th, that mathematics is again getting tested. So quite naturally your memories from the past are likely to haunt you and maybe that plays large on your mind. And that is what I feel Madhurima, you are uh, mentioning to me as getting scared, right? If, if there is something, yes, more, yeah, something more deeper to it, you can tell me. So what I would suggest to you and also to everyone is to realize that which we keep on saying that this net as an exam 
is an important exam for all of us, okay? But let me also clarify this. We have given and we have been part of way more challenging exams in the past. When all of us appeared for the class 10th boards, while we were, I think, 14, 15 or 16, the level of maturity was almost half actually, you know, in, uh, in terms of uh, our reasoning ability and our maturity. When we were in school, at least in the Indian society, we are much lesser exposed compared to when we get into college, right? Of course, I'm not generalizing it, but I am giving sharing a fact with all of you. So if you, as uh, someone who is still trying to understand how the outer world is, could manage that exam, right? In whichever way, you only passed it. And that's why you all are here, you know, appearing for a master's opportunity. You should try to look at a TISNET exam again as a similar opportunity that will help you to get closer to maybe a more broader goal set or a more important goal set. So when you look at maths also, if you try to realize maths is a very important part of your syllabus to crack the exam, that itself can play very large on our minds. Try to look at maths again, I keep repeating as a tool, not a subject. If you are making silly mistakes and you know it's a silly mistake, right? That means you must might be thinking over and over again a little too much every time you're appearing for a mock test, right? So there has to be a conscious attempt because what we do is a result of our consciousness in most of the times. There has to be a conscious attempt, Madhunima, that look at the questions in maths, not as some a, a section where you are pressurized to perform. Look at it as a section that will be a bonus to what you already know. So I would say that you have to acknowledge that maybe GK or verbal ability, they are stronger zones for you than a maths. That means 30 plus 40 marks, 70 marks out of 100 in the exam from GK and uh, verbal ability. Even if I take into consideration that GK may not always be very comforting a zone, but definitely verbal ability of 30 questions, right? So you have, you have more than 50% of the paper covered already as your strength. So when you appear for an exam, focus on the strengths first. If you start off with maths, where you are faltering, right? The chances of making silly errors in that section is going to increase because you have allowed yourself much longer time, right? When you focus more on maybe GK and English in the exam and then move to maths, you are spending most of the time then of the, on the paper with parts that are more comforting to you. I hope my words are making sense to you, Madhurima. Yes, sir. Right. So that's what I mean that when you appear for an exam, your time that you're investing every moment is going to be very valuable. And you want returns every time you're attempting a question. How do you uh, ascertain the return? You can ascertain the return when you have identified, again, I'm telling you, your plan A and plan B. That classification, that categorization is going to be very important. And I'm very sure that if you, if you keep that approach, the silly errors will be reducing because you are not getting enough time to commit those errors. That's one. You are providing more emphasis on your strengths. Even in maths, there might be certain types of questions or certain questions from topics which you have seen 
you are much more comfortable whenever a question has been set from it even if you have not practiced you have got the answer correct so identify questions from those chapters first and attempt them and to identify let me also tell you everyone at the start of the exam on 20th don't hesitate to invest anywhere between 5 to 7 or 8 minutes at the beginning to examine the entire paper you have a computer screen in front of you the layout is very intuitive there are sections on top then there is a navigation pane on the side i think this has a demo link on their website which you all of you have must have seen and you can skip back and forth you can check all the questions even without attempting it i think doing that is very important than rushing to start off and trying to cover as much as possible because those first 5 to 6 minutes what you can do is in your rough sheet you identify the questions you say okay question 41 a very simple question from percentage you feel you can do it so you write 41 you don't have to attempt that time itself because the moment you start attempting that question your mindset changes your first mindset is to identify the list of questions from across the 100 questions which you feel you can do and your target is in the first 40 minutes try to score or try to mark 40 questions so that in the remaining 60 minutes you have enough time to explore or you know to to basically experiment and the overall outcome is much more stronger than wasting time at the beginning any other query or questions please feel free any concern sir, here I, uh, yeah sadafia one query uh, sir while solving papers the majority of the time i face one issue is time budgeting while completing reading comprehensions because they are just one mark answers but then the big passage after reading mm. them and them answering one question it's very time consuming right so see you have identified sadaf that reading comprehension is a time consuming affair for you right at the most what you can do is based on the type of comprehension passage by type of comprehension passage i mean we have generally noticed if a comprehension passage is lengthy that you know it it looks long there is a high possibility that a lot of information might be shared from that passage in that passage so don't ever be misled by the length of a passage right what you should try to do is maybe look at the question say which is usually one question is asked or maximum two questions are asked from a passage we have seen over the years at the most five questions being asked from a single passage in tisnet and that's it there has been no other question from reading comprehension some years they have divided it into uh, passages two three passages and from each one question or two questions have been asked so that there are total of around five questions from reading comprehension passage usually what we usually find when students are appearing for the exam and this is a strategy that uh, helps a lot is that looking and ascertaining the tone of the question so if a question is a very inferential type of question by inferential you mean that okay if someone ask you what is the summary of the passage a summary of the passage means that you have to understand this passage from the top to bottom summary does not mean that you can just read one line and know right or sometimes the same question is asked like what would be the most suitable title to this passage it's the same question as knowing the summary because the most suitable title is going to be uh, at par with the central idea of the passage right so i would say that try to first realize the type of question that has been asked if you feel looking at the type of question you have to study the passage really well do not compromise your 
on your time especially when you know there are more questions which can be covered much more easier way than the reading comprehension at hand so never feel guilty that oh god i can't answer a reading comprehension so that control of your mind is very important during an exam lot of times you know from nowhere our own ego comes in and you know say you are you might have been historically very strong in a question chapter on percentage in maths and a simple percentage question the answer is not matching never ever get into like a temper driven uh, impulse of becoming very very sentimental about it right because you are wasting time it makes sense only when you have covered most of the questions you are very happy with your attempts and you still have little time left in which you are trying to you know get something more you can afford to do that so even when it comes to reading comprehension or with any question that flexibility should be in your mind that's why plan a and plan b because plan a is about your priorities your strengths plan b are the lesser strong zones so sadav i would say that if reading comprehension has been consistently troubling you then uh, you don't have to necessarily attempt that part first keep that aside and try to then uh, you know uh, cover as much as possible uh, the other type of questions across the sections thank you so you're welcome any other question anyone anything specific feel free to ask nitin anshul anurit mahesh shruti doita yash uh, no sir i had a question about you know the time allocation and yeah it was covered so okay dia sir hi mahesh go ahead yeah so i have a question about the cut off for hospital right. administration and media and culture right for obc category okay right so uh, the point is that always try to remember uh, cut offs do not have a pattern okay but mahesh for your reference i can tell you Mm, for both the courses that you have mentioned, under a res reserved category, let me be very realistic about it. I don't want to influence any of you with cutoffs from last year or previous year. I'll tell you why. Cutoffs have fluctuated a lot over the years. There used to be a time when a social work program of community organization and development practice (CODP). used to hover around the 50 55 mark as the cut off till the year before last when it saw a cut off of 68 and it was a huge jump okay public policy they had a cut off 3 or 3 years ago of a very modest around the 55 to 60 when it in one go it jumped to 71 okay now it hovers around i think 61 or something like that for general category and a little lesser than that for the reserved category mahesh i would say that to be really safe if you ask me anywhere above 55 is going to be a safe bet for the courses that you have mentioned the moment let me also clarify all of you hear of a cut off you know from 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 me or from anyone else who is trying to guide you consciously or subconsciously you know your mind immediately captures that value and you try to create a virtual target of scoring that much in the exam and which is again a big no no especially for an exam like this net even if the cut off could be low we really don't know 
how your final selection is going to be in this year let me clarify because see last year we had uh, you know uh, a situation due to the pandemic where the tisnet score right the weightage on the tisnet score changed dramatically compared to what it was before the lockdown this year we know that the tisnet score has no relevance as of now when it comes to the final uh, adding up of the scores but we cannot take a chance because judging the number of candidates that are appearing for exams judging the demand of social science programs there is high possibility mahesh and the rest i hope all of you are following my words for scores to get tied and when scores get tied if you look up in their website you will see it is clearly mentioned for ties the tisnet scores are checked okay like tie means when when it gets tied after your pat pi so you don't want to relax with your tisnet score isn't it so mahesh i hope you are able to follow what i am telling you right yes sir. so i would suggest to everyone go ahead for the 20th february exam as a great opportunity to prove yourself right and put in your best effort do not leave any stone unturned to score higher irrespective of the type of course even if someone tells you are don't worry don't, you don't have to score a 60 just scoring a 55 will take you in but there is no guarantee of that wherever you are i mean there is really no guarantee that the cut offs are going to be the same because cut offs are never the same any year it is a general uh, uh, you know perception that there are certain category of courses which might be low cut off there are certain category of courses which are like high cut off but we really don't know because all the more because we had a pandemic we are still recovering from the pandemic right there have been so many uh, like people i know who have uh, you know left their jobs or lo lost their jobs and then they considered shifting careers and they are looking at tisnet as a as an important uh, launch pad so i would say that do not ever relax in your head uh, try and score as much as possible as high as possible out of 100 don't think that okay i have attempted enough and you still have 5 minutes of time left don't stop attempting there is nothing to lose in this exam don't suddenly become like you know someone who is very uh ethical about uh, attempting multiple choice questions that if you don't know an answer you are not going to mark it please don't be that right because you never know that you know that that little extra marks that you will score will help you very strongly in the long run because there it's a long way to go tisnet is just one third of your selection process then you have the program aptitude test the personal interview that follows right program aptitude and personal interviews itself they are a different ball game altogether so that is where i feel the mindset in the exam is going to be very crucial again i am telling you please relax yourself don't let the reputation of the institute get to you try to understand that you are an individual who is needed at this don't feel that you are at the mercy of someone it's not that you know you have this is the uh, final day of of our lives right it's not that you know you have been asked to choose a life partner with whom you have to you have to spend all all over right what you have to understand is that your self belief is going to cover the questions 
and you will try your best to be smart and opportunistic during the exam right so that is where i feel a major difference happens with your final scoring and then how you go about with with your exam okay any other questions from students shivank you joined the session any questions that you would like to raise the other thing that i would of course like to again repeat is that practice wearing a mask and spending at least 2 hours or more like that because you are not going to appear for the exam from your house you have to travel you have to reach a point from your uh, uh from your house or you know from your from from your uh, nodal zone and there you have to appear for the exam wearing a mask right also which i keep on mentioning to everyone is that every day from now onwards if not attempting a mock test but try to be most productive with your practice and revision between 2 pm to 3:40 every day do not sleep during that time in the afternoon because 2 pm to 3:40 is a very uh afternoon siesta friendly time duration it is not the typical 10 am or 11 am exam right so it is like a post lunch time slot and your mind should be at its most alertness as well as at its most efficient uh frame when you are sitting for the exam right so whatever you did earlier doesn't matter now in the run up to the to saturday 2 pm to 3:40 you should really you know practice wearing a mask if not longer and uh, revise try to concentrate maximum if you want to do maths you want to just solve questions logical reasoning just do that you should not waste your time during that part of the day ensure that you have lunch much earlier so that you have your own space in that period right so that's again a important thing because our biological clock also needs to be uh, tuned as per the requirement of the exam right any other questions that you would like to ask in the next uh, few days do you all want uh, us to help you revise some gk or like you know help you with the revision of some of the parts from the syllabus yes or no if anyone has any requirement feel free to share because we can definitely facilitate that it's never too late remember gk does not change the indian constitution doesn't change we will also be telling you the same yes students yes any other questions please so yeah so coming to the final point that i was asking uh do you want any support or input on a gk revision or in a basic static orientation as a run up yes or no just to help you with the flow and the momentum
Okay. Right. I think. Okay. Thanks for your consensus. Then we'll definitely plan that tomorrow onwards, and I'll be sharing the schedule with all of you. Uh, Akansha, I think you had you had asked me something. a technical question if you're still there about yeah it is going to be offline and it is uh, going to be in a in a physical mode in terms of sitting in front of a computer and appearing for the test it is what we call a cbt a computer based test so you have to go to a center and i think uh, you must have received the name of the center uh, uh, uh you know in your admit card and i think i can't say you are you're preparing for the next year so of course uh that's how it is right thank you sir thank you you're welcome madhurima uh, your question of uh, previous year's testnet question papers online yeah so they are beneficial in terms of helping all of us understand the priorities of the tis uh questions right you cannot expect that questions will be repeated uh not usually right but again you should not also be negligent about the questions that came in the past sometimes what we what we see is that if there is a question on br ambedkar earlier uh say maybe connected to his uh, representation of the depressed classes in the round table conferences we see that there is another question from br ambedkar on article 32 uh, which is like the heart and soul of the constitution now um, so br ambedkar is important right that is how we understand earlier we have seen that you know questions from mahatma gandhi had come like you know with gandhi urban pact and last year they had asked a question on mahatma gandhi's quotation so again that becomes relevant right so some of these parts will definitely be uh, useful when you look at the questions from previous years but uh, do not purely bank on them that's what i am trying to help everyone understand right shivank to a 2019 current affairs now it is not usually important save and except let me also clarify that in 2019 we saw the reorganization of jammu and kashmir happening right the abrogation uh, of the section of the constitution which is still relevant in fact uh, the jammu and kashmir language bill was passed at the start of 2020 by the time it was passed we were all grappling with the coronavirus pandemic so uh, we uh, most of us did not even notice i think the home minister amit shah was uh, launching another bill for the reorganization of jnk a couple of days back if not uh, yesterday or day before so if you see the date back to 2019 so you cannot write off those events even from 2019 because they are important 2019 december again shivank and the rest we saw the entire caa uh, uprising in our country the the citizenship amendment act being passed and that is still our focus so some of these things mm, which really has a, a i mean been doing the rounds is going to be still important shivam but otherwise 2020 is more relevant for current affairs so uh yes uh since you you wrote a direct message to me uh, like i hope you don't mind you know sharing this in a pu public platform irrespective of your 
mock results let me clarify try to constantly focus on the parts of the exam where you went wrong don't look at a mock of being an opportunity where you can score a high and feel good about it is try and understand why do we give mocks why do we practice before an exam so that we can identify very clearly those sections of our syllabus and curriculum on which we need to work more mock if if you score 100 out of 100 in mocks what will you do you will be happy and will you go to sleep is that your target for mocks that's certainly not your target for mocks yash is to be able to identify so whatever you score and since you know that okay if i am falling behind by certain margin what all did i miss out right if you see that okay i have been able to score as much as possible in maths and english but my gk is where i am faltering immensely so even in a mock and i hope that the mocks that you are giving make sense to you and it makes sense to the overall test pattern there will is definitely going to be sources of questions which have a definitive pattern that you might missing out so you know try to read up on those parts more so that is where the evaluation and self assessment becomes a very strong tool you know to to uh, help us improve our scores help us you know identify the zones and also it helps us in making that plan that i was i am sharing on screen na plan a and plan b to write down all those parts that has always uh, helped you to score and those which you don't like so much so that in an exam you exactly know what to attempt first and what to attempt later what you are really good at is what you attempt first what you are not good at you attempt later so i think yes think over it try to also evaluate that okay how did you attempt the exams did you just start from any question that you chose from or did you actually spend did you spend time in making a list of the question that you wanted to attempt and i'm telling everyone that make that a habit with your practices with your revision to the exam don't keep everything for the test day because if you're not habituated with it if you don't know how to use a rough rough sheet the rough sheet is just not given to you know for you to do rough work there are great utilities of the rough sheet one being that if a rough sheet is given on a lot of data interpretation questions the edge of the sheet which is a straight line can be used you can put it on the screen to create references so because otherwise you are not given a scale or ruler to carry in so there are many benefits you might have certain symbols short forms of your own that help you to you know do a rough work more effectively when you are listing the questions say question 41 you are very sure of so you know you should have your own symbols maybe a tick sign which means that okay you are very confident say question 50 you feel you can attempt it but you're not sure if you you will be able to get the final answer so you put a question mark next to it and maybe also a tick that it falls under your strength but the way the question has been framed you may not be completely sure about it these syntaxes help you to reorganize your attempts better time budgeting which a lot of you have been talking of is purely out of your rough sheet your scratch sheet that's what we call it so that is where you basically build your strategy you know to during an exam so yes i hope you know my words are making sense to you that give the exam in a very free spirited manner don't be pressurized to perform be exploratory in nature and be planned without planning you know there's no fun Uh, yes, my strategy is that I first go with the English proficient, and then, and then I attempt maths, and then 
at last i go with the jk uh, jk section yes absolutely i mean see again i am telling you whatever your strategy is you might be uh, taken for surprise that you know the english questions suddenly are appearing to be not very comfort comforting for you now in your mind you have gone with the strategy that you will attempt english first right so that means that if that plan a does not work that's why i have kept plan b that maybe the maths questions are appearing to be more simpler than english questions like th there might be questions from para jumbles which you are feeling the options are very close to each other there is a reading comprehension which appears to be pretty complicated so always remember that your flexibility holds the secret recipe during the exam and that flexibility is also a test of your temperament right your temperament is tested during the aptitude test your temperament is tested during the program aptitude test and of course your temperament is tested the most during the personal interview right but to reach those stages we have to first focus on the 20th february exam okay sir thank you so much all the best you're welcome any other question students we are almost nearing closure for tonight shruti any questions diya any questions hello sir yes shivan go ahead Uh, so I know this question is very out of the context, but since you mentioned that uh, you know when you are attempting a paper and you don't know the answer, so it is not necessary that you be very ethical and don't mark that answer. So what we do when we don't know any questions, so we keep all those questions at last and randomly go for pick card. Sir, one thing what I have this uh, uh, doubt, I I would uh, I would uh, deem it a doubt that when we are going for this pick card, so. what should we do we should select only one option that is the most common when i am solving suppose i am solving maths question so i see that many right answers at are at option b no so no 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 no, no. <laughs> i know what your question was this, this is like so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly hmm. so including us shivang thanks for raising the question that is a very strong yes. thing question paper setters they all know now that option b is the most preferred correct answer okay mm -hmm. now let me please let me clarify this to all of you this used to be very relevant when question paper when the competitive exams were on paper and you had to mark mm -hmm. an omr sheet you had to yes, you know darken a bubble Mm -hmm. let me now clarify this with even a test net exam like, even like a cat exam here you might be surprised on 20th february that the options don't have abc anymore in it they are just the options like the answers okay with mm -hmm. a with a radio button next to it okay mm -hmm. and let me also clarify which we do in catalyst a lot is you have uh, features in the software that creates the questions or the mock tests that these answers and options are also shuffled so say mm -hmm. shivank you are in the exam hall sitting next to monami okay who is also in the in this mm -hmm. session right now for question number 31 if mm -hmm. monami's option b is say 40 km per hour mm -hmm. for the same question 31 shivank your answer your option b or b i mean second from the top yeah understood sir may not be 40 km per hour your option d could be 40 km per hour okay sir okay sir. now yes, yes so this is one aspect that i i hope everyone should be aware of i'll tell you again why let's also be realistic about it that 
in many exams, I should not say this, but in many exam centers, you know, there are certain plagiarism that happens. Let me also tell you, tell all of you. It is, it is unethical, unfortunate. It is, it is an offense, but you never know that, you know, the, the person next to you could be generous and they just tell you uh, 20 is option A. That person could be correct, let me tell you. Because to that person's question set or computer, his correct or her correct answer could be option A. But that is no guarantee that your A and that A is the same. Right? So this is a disclaimer for every one of you. Please, please be very careful. I am not supporting any level of plagiarism, but I'm telling you the truth, which a lot of times students, when they come out of the hall, they realize, oh God, the answers were different. They were shuffled. Okay. Now, and sometimes what happened is even without plagiarism, like you have attempted your questions well and you are see matching the answers with someone and you remember some questions. Usually you remember a lot of questions when you are fresh out of the exam hall. And you remember that, okay, the data interpretation question, which had this line graph of human development index and it asked us to calculate the average. My answer was option C. And you're telling your friend that I got C. Your friend is telling you, no, but I think I marked A. It is not about A or C, it is the value, okay? So when it comes to marking a question that you don't know at all, there are two things. Either if there is some gut feeling or logic that is coming to your mind, Shivank and the rest, and you feel that, okay, this looks to be plausible, mark that. If nothing is in your mind, like you can't really help, but you mark any of your choice. But I can tell you that, that those days of option B being the correct answer choice is no more there because uh, the software randomizes the options per question. They shuffle their choices. Yes, sir. Actually, I was saying that not. I'm not particularly uh, 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 asking about option B. Suppose when I'm attempting the paper, I see what I have under. Uh, I have gone through the mocks. I see that many correct answers are. Suppose they are placed at option A. So when I have some questions left and I don't know anything about them, so I should go with the random options or I should press option A for the same questions as. So as you said that you go with your gut feeling and you feel if it's right, then go for it. Or we, it depends on our discretion as well. So see, prob probabilistically, if I do simple maths, suppose 10 questions on the trot, you only keep marking option A, all of them, okay? And you know that for each question, out of four, there is only one answer. So probabilistically, out of 10 questions, you are supposed to get 2.5 correct. Or out of 20 questions, such questions, you're you are supposed to get five correct. But five correct, Shivank, means you're also getting 15 incorrect. So if you simply rely on probability and keep marking only A, 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 A everywhere, it could go either ways, right? So, I mean, I really have no answer to this that if you don't know a question at all, how do you mark? you mark with your gut feeling. The gut feeling concept is a very individualistic thing. It's something like, you know, you know, it's, it's an intuition. It's, it's like a, you know, sense that it is. So I don't think really we can um, create a rule for that. Okay, any other questions before we call it a night? Hello. Hi, Dia, yes, go ahead. Yes. So, as you mentioned that we should examine all the question first yes. before starting the paper. Yes. Yes. So, uh, yes. do we get to view the all the question all at questions? A... All questions. 
But then, so, sir, in the mock test, we have to like skip and skip. Yeah, exactly. By all questions, yeah. I mean you got to skip. So okay, so, are... so won't that be a, a time-consuming like no, doing no. all the questions? No, no. So yeah, I I understand where you're coming from. In the mock test, which we are all giving, dear, and to the rest, you are relying on your internet bandwidth to fetch the question. when you will be appearing for the exam at the tis test center you will not be using internet for your exam the exam or the question or the entire paper or you know the questions for you are fetched from a local server okay so i don't want to get into technical details about it what 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 i'm trying to share with you is that you get you can skip back and forth questions instantaneously like in a in a flash you don't have to wait for that question you know to uh, be downloaded like waiting you see na in the browser how it happens waiting for the next question then it goes sometimes you will even see the timer has moved on so you have lost some seconds so that is not going to be the case in your actual exam your actual exam every test center where the computers are set you will see that typically it's a college if not a school or you know sometimes these are like business centers where computers are placed and this installs a server from where it is instantaneously drawn so the fetching time of the questions is very rapid it's like split of a second as fast as it so you can go back and forth as much as possible i can assure you it will not eat into okay. your time yeah Okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, I'm sure. Go ahead. So, in the uh, test inter question paper interface, would we have the option to flag our questions? Yes, for, absolutely. So, Always. so we can. Okay, sir. Flag a question. So, thank you, sir. Yeah, flagging a hmm. question is a very important tool. You can you can go back to that question, right? Now, what happens? A lot of times we see that students in a rush. they forget the flagged questions okay this interface if i'm not mistaken last year also we had noticed that they even before you submit the final test or you they ask you to review the questions and they will even show you that these are some of the questions which are already flagged so you're supposed to unflag the questions right like you either when you flag a question it means you want to go back to the question later and once you have selected an option to that question it automatically gets unflagged else it remains flagged now flagging also has its own implication and that implication is best defined by you as i was telling you that you know you flag a question on your screen so suppose you have flagged question 37 the reason why you flagged is you attempted the question but you did not get an answer okay then you have flagged the question 50 the reason why you flagged is that you feel it's a very simple question and you will be able to get it at one go you flagged question number 62 say in a gk section suppose where you have flagged it because two options you are a little confused about so how you define a flag should be in your head during the exam and if required you should make little note in form you know in your shorthand using symbols on your rough sheet the rough sheet is a very important uh, companion during your competitive exam so anshul i think you can put that into perspective on the test day okay thank you sir you're welcome right students so i hope there is no other question we will then stop for the night here what i would uh, definitely um, be doing as a lot of you uh, 